reading. Hang on, I know these motherfuckers are weavers because of that stupid fucking loom of fate, but how did a class of loomies just suddenly become expert assassins? It's not like they had any formal training or shit, right? They weren't hunters or warriors or even fucking gatherers. This group of assholes continued to call themselves the fraternity, even though they became partially comprised of women. Okay, the evil boss lady is overweight and older, but otherwise, this is an impossible amount of good-looking women on this staff. It's a fucking accounting firm, not a Hollywood agency, for God's sake. Standard course. I'm finding it hard to care about anything these days. On Weeration. The only thing I do care about is the fact that I can't care about anything. Even though Wesley is a desk jockey that works with spreadsheets all day, he has an active camera feed of his face on his desktop. Wesley Gibson types his own name into Google, a fairly common name, and gets no results. I'm surprised Google didn't sue over this. It takes 10 seconds and 9 f***ing cuts to show this asshole walking down a hallway. We'd like to know where our competitor is getting his munition. Later we find out that the guys across the street are assassins, but how did they know that this dude would be here trying to get information about a bullet at this exact time? This woman checking the bullet obviously didn't expect him to be here today, so how did the assassins figure it out? It's clean, meaning it's untraceable. This is said after three whole seconds of looking at the bullet with a magnification of two. Four amazing marksmen with f**k you rifles missed the Irish guy from Braveheart after being able to center an aiming dot on an Indian woman's bindi. This highly trained assassin resorts to the same futile method of speeding up elevator doors as teenagers in a f**king horror movie. I guess this lady making copies didn't hear all the glass breaking, and the guy running into three people in the hallway. This presentation has to be ready by 5pm, goddammit, and Carol isn't stealing her thunder. Mr. X smashes through the window and starts killing dudes, which is cool, I guess. I'm just wondering why these assassins are still here, since he was obviously headed for the elevator and was out of range a second ago. Also, while it's amazing he can do this type of thing, why the f*** can't they shoot him? They were just the decoys by Mr. X. I know these fraternity bastards are hard to kill, but this is a super elaborate ruse to take Mr. X out, considering Wesley's dad could have done it while he was flying through the f***ing air trying to kill those minions. How am I supposed to sleep with all that f***? Bracket. I know Wesley's girlfriend is a cheating no good hussy, but this sounds like the first time she's ever complained about something that likely happens every single day. I, think I, used to have a purpose. I can't tell if using nine inch nails every day is exactly the same as brilliantly appropriate or so incredibly obvious as to be sinful. Hmm, gotta think about that one. Seen Barry? He had to go to the dentist. Again. Ah, sudden adulterated Chris Pratt. Also, geez, these guys have the exact same sex every day. Basically clothed and in the same position. Cheating on your boyfriend looks super boring. I'll get it done, Janice. Oh, like I never heard that before. I'll get it done. I'll get it done. Movie doesn't trust us to realize how awful this boss is, so it goes way over the top to prove the point. You know, if Wesley's staying later than anyone else in this office, why the hell isn't he getting those billing reports done? The evil boss lady has a point. If he'd spend less time bitching about his life and Googling himself, maybe he'd be a little more productive. Wait, this is the same day as the last time Wesley went to the pharmacy, which is some bullshit. Even though he's having a rough time, no f***ing pharmacist is going to give you a refill of your relaxy pills in the same goddamn day. You apologize too much. I know everyone's supposed to be looking cool and all, but Fox is on the hunt for the most dangerous assassin that's ever assassined. And yet she still engages in some misleading sexy small talk before the movie begins to actually get wanted. Your father died yesterday on the rooftop of the Metropolitan Building. And I just felt like the pharmacy was the best place to tell you all this. Your you father go? was one of the greatest assassins who ever lived. Seriously, she's discussing this here, why? The man who killed him is behind you. This is Angelina Jolie's killing face. Until this movie, the only people that had seen it were Billy Bob Thornton, who barely escaped, and a random hooker in Death Valley, who unfortunately didn't. Fox does this because just firing her super powerful gun through the impenetrable forces of potato chip bags would make killing this dude impossible. Is it just me, or is this bullet that is going through all the cereal pretty slow? I mean, if we can see each individual box getting blown off the shelf, it's pretty avoidable. <laughs> As cool as this shot is, Wesley's knees and ankles survive this. Please, please strike faster! Movie inflicts damage by causing memories of Gone in 60 seconds. No, sh God damn it, when will movies stop trying to convince me that large, slow, clunky trucks can totally keep pace with sleek, speedy, turn on a dime sports cars? What are you doing? What are you shooting a car for? Huh? Apparently, this movie thought it needed James McAvoy to be the most annoying sidekick in a movie since Kate Capshaw in The Temple of Doom. What's worse is, he's supposed to be the hero by the end of it, which means the movie felt the need to really hammer home how pathetic he is, because the first 17 minutes didn't do that already. Grab the wheel! Oh, Fox doesn't think this is the most efficient way to kill the assassin, but how else is she gonna show Wesley her vagina during this fight, dammit? It's amazing that it took this long for one of these super highly trained assholes to remember to aim at the f***ing tires! Movie unintentionally inspires much of the bullshit that's now featured in the Fast and Furious franchise. If Vin Diesel bends one bullet in the next movie, so help me God! See, the right rear tire was shot out, right? How the f*** is this car doing anything cool right now? I mean, okay, I guess we're forgetting all about that. Instead of immediately going after the car that started this whole thing and just recently flipped over them, the cops investigate a truck that lightly tapped one of their vehicles. Shoot the wings 
off the flies. This is an exercise to show Wesley his skills, but mostly it's an indictment on this secret assassin headquarters terrible health code standards. Insanity is being shit on, beat down, coasting through life in a miserable existence when you have a caged lion locked inside and the key to release it. Sloan pitched the same line to the company that makes those inspirational office posters, but was sadly denied. This gun you're holding belonged to your father. Dad's position. Ah! I'm not sure if I've mentioned how Matrix this movie is trying to be. It is so Matrix, Keanu Reeves accidentally thought he was in this movie when it came out. Also, is there any reason why they took him back to his place? I mean, they want him to be on the team, and they appear not to be giving him much choice, so I don't understand why they took him back here. Plus, did he get here on his own power? Because that must have been some scene when the fraternity dragged his unconscious body up to his apartment and put him in bed next to his unobservant girlfriend. This article tells us eight bodies were found on top of the roof of this building, but only five people died on top of the building, and one died in the other building from across the way. So who else f***ing died during that scene? I mean, the answer is whoever wrote this article f***ed up, right? Junior high must have been kind of tough, but it doesn't give you the right to treat your workers like horse Janice. What I'd rather be watching is a Janice origin story, in order to explain how such an obnoxious person with little to do except give people sh was put in charge of a very large accounting firm in downtown Chicago. Okay, we're gonna need you to emote, Chris Pratt. No! Emote! I feel I can speak for the entire office when I tell you, go f*** yourself. Barry somehow heard this whispered insult from all the way across the entire office. Roll credits. Also, these are the worst facial composites ever drawn. These assholes have tons of surveillance video footage to examine, and they came up with these? At least 80% of Angelina Jolie's performance in this movie is comprised of sexy staring. Pussy. I'm not a pussy. You're a pussy. I'm not a pussy. You're a pussy. This goes on for some time. Ah, that silly internet craze back in 2008 known as Han Soloing. Ah, the memories. Is it vodka? Yeah. Are you Russian? Yeah. Because only Russians would ever give vodka to someone. Kinda racist, but I'll roll with it. This is the gunsmith. He knows more about a piece than anybody, and he's gonna teach you how to use one. Yeah, some would say he has uncommon knowledge about guns. If no one told you that bullets flew straight, and I gave you a gun and told you to hit the target, what would you do? Ignore physics and logic, I guess? Seriously, the f sense does this question make? Come on! Once again, movies suggest that no one is currently looking out their L-adjacent window in downtown Chicago. Or if they are, they just don't give a sh about these two assholes on top of a train. He got wrecked this perfect shot. Impossible angle. I would love for this movie to define what actually is and isn't possible in this universe. I want you to try and catch it! You want me to stick my hand in there? Jesus Christ, this dude is more obnoxious than Luke Skywalker on Dagobah. He's seen all this crazy sh and he knows he's being trained to do superhero-like tasks. But at every new challenge, he's got a bitch about how impossible it is. You're ready when Fox says you're ready. Isn't that you? Why are you talking about yourself in the third person? Oh wait, that's a different movie that came out this year. Damn, I'm getting my foxes all mixed up. People think you use cheese to catch these beauties, but they go apeshit for peanut butter. Road and Shadow. So we're in front of a moving train? No reason? This guy is whistling the universal signal for Angelina Jolie is naked somewhere, and all males in the vicinity need to take notice. Also, I don't know what she did today where she needed to get into the healing Han Solo carbonite, but this movie's marketing is glad she did. What the Main character finally says the right thing under extreme duress cliche. To kill Cross, I have to become his student. Memorize every move he ever made. Or just shoot your gun with the proper bendy method when you face off against him. That'll work too. He was always one chess move ahead. This sequence mixes in Wesley's improvement in knife skills, shuttle catching, and homework. So I guess we could call this a montage à toi. It's kind of amazing that this is a task Wesley needs to master for his training. I mean, we're in a world where these guys can curve bullets. What would this skill be useful for? Movie makes it seem like Wesley is making a bold creative choice, when in fact, he's going to be hit by all the traffic most of the times he might try this. Yay, he curved the bullet! I would have removed 50 sins if the bullet curved, but still missed the target, and another 100 if it killed Fox. This movie's trying to make it sound like if they successfully curve the bullet, it always hits its target, which I think is ludicrous. Also, considering that the fraternity has these healing pools, I'm not sure what the total danger is here. I guess he could hit her in the brain or the heart or something, and it would be something beyond a healing bath. But, you know, call me crazy, I just don't think the character played by Angelina Jolie has a chance in hell of getting harmed in this scene. Welcome to the fraternity. Also, apparently you only have to do something once to pass the test in this f***ing club. I mean, he did the bullet thing under the heavy stress of not killing Fox, so who's to say he could do that sh again without any prompting? A thousand years ago, a clan of weavers discovered a mystical language hidden in the fabric. F*** this f***ing loom of destiny and its bullshitty plot-driven bullshit. This movie was fine when it was just about assassins doing assassin stuff, but then it f***s itself right in its own f***ing asshole with its f***ing loom and its f***ing bull. Look, I thought you brought me here to kill Cross. You will, in time. Sloan had his cross-killing boner raging several days ago when Wesley wasn't getting the training. Wesley's the only one who can get to him. 
cross gets closer with each hour. But now he's fine with taking some practice strokes. The target will be in the conference room sitting at the head chair. Does this guy always sit in the conference room at a certain time of day? Every day? Why can't they kill this dude when he's at home? I don't know if he was bad. Wesley's hanging out in the recovery bath, even though he wasn't injured during the mission, in the hopes he can get another wide-angle shot of Angelina's new body double. Movie had an enormous candle budget, but was apparently only allowed to candle in one shot. We don't know how far the ripples of our decisions go. Kill one, and maybe save a thousand. That's all well and good, but it still seems arbitrary. Like, how many people are you not killing because the loom doesn't tell you about them? But they're responsible for some horrible crime. And let's not forget, this seems all relegated to the city of Chicago, which is apparently the sphere of influence for the entire world. This asshole had a clean, straight-on shot when he failed to pull the trigger the last time, but decides this time he needs to curve the bullet for some bullshit reason. The target will be in a black limo. He always travels the same six blocks of Halstead. You don't need to know the time he does this. Just go to Halstead whenever you want, and he's probably there, being a dick in his limo. So many things here. First off, his tires don't even move to the right, so it's basically flipping to the right on its own without him steering it that way. Second, you have all the information in the world about a target, and you guys decided that the best time to kill him is when he's in his bulletproof limo, a fact you did not discover for some reason until you were on the job. Third, why is this ramping even necessary? Can't you just find a way to curve a bullet into his sunroof? Or is the curving just a horizontal thing? Fourth, this is why grenades are a thing. I don't know, I feel like adding five cents for this scene. Also, why did they even show cops pursuing them earlier in the movie? They've definitely disappeared since then, considering it's not like these assassins have been discreet or anything. Just curve the bullet, man! Curving makes for an accurate shot every time! Assassin walks up behind another assassin without a word and expects that assassin not to assassin. A thousand. Somehow this literally translates to, when you have a chance, somehow catch a thousand mice using peanut butter, strap bombs on them, find a way to infiltrate the headquarters, and blow them up. And Wesley gets the message. Why did they leave this canister with a mouse inside it just lying on the floor? Is it so the movie could remind us and James McAvoy about the mouse bomb from earlier, which we'll now figure into the finale? I go alone or he doesn't show. Okay. The fact that Cross has a loom panel is an obvious tip-off that he's not the real villain here, considering the loom of bull spits that stuff out only by fate. Does Wesley think Cross's name just coincidentally came up around the same time he went rogue? So this is the birthplace of the fraternity, which has its own loom of fate and everything. But is Terrence Stamp the only person who works here anymore? That must be a tough job, keeping up with all those assassination jobs all on your own at the age of 70. Oh look, I guess there are no cops in this made-up Eastern European city either. This dude, who looks nothing like Cross, gets mistaken for him nonetheless. Fox drives down one of those movie roads where you can chase after a train and no one is ever in your way. If I tried this, there would be some asshole on a tractor driving down this road. Jeez, this is the third time their bullets have hit each other in midair. This feels like the precursor to Harry Potter and Voldemort. Well, those innocent assholes are now dead, which means Fox essentially killed them with that stupid car stunt, and should therefore have her assassin car revoked. Wesley survives this. Oh, and this too. Wesley. Older character has dying words for the protagonist cliche. Jesus, is he gonna reference a prophecy about Wesley being the one? You're my son. God damn it. Also, why couldn't this dude tell him that earlier? He obviously can figure out when Wesley goes to the grocery store or hangs out in the back alley next to a train station. But he couldn't figure out where he lived and at least slipped him a note. Not only did Fox impossibly survive the fall of the train car, she's healthy enough to sexily skulk in the background until prompted by the script. This train is derailed on a bridge over the deepest chasm on the planet, allowing Wesley to have a few more seconds with his dad. Wesley's dad found an apartment nearby where he could watch his son sometimes have sex with his girlfriend, but sometimes watch Wesley's best friend have sex with his girlfriend. I promised your father I'd bring you back here. Wait, so the limey was able to catch up to the train, locate the exact spot where Wesley and Cross fell into the water, save Wesley, make the trek back up the mountain, keep him alive on the entire trip back to Chicago, then put him in the recovery tank, and do all this without any help or without anyone seeing it? Ever since Fox had her teeth in you, he's been trying to separate you from them. But instead of sending some emails, notes, or phone calls, he preferred the let's keep pretending I'm a bad guy who's trying to shoot you method of getting the message across. Your father got hold of this. Decipher it yourself. Cross had the loom swatch that named Sloan for some reason, but didn't write down who it was so we could have an extremely obvious whammy to set up the final act. Yes. Okay, so why weren't any of the other fraternities notified about Sloan? Why weren't they given a kill order when clearly one of their own had gone rogue? Or does this go a long way backing up the idea that Chicago is the only town where a magic loom tells assassins whom to kill? You want me to run? God damn it. This asshole dragged this other asshole all the way back to Chicago, which is the home of Sloan's army, to tell him he needs to flee somewhere else. And why the f when he need to see Cross's house to believe he was his father? Couldn't this dude just show him the f***ing pictures back in Europe? God damn it, this movie gets real stupid at the end. Wesley is buying a ton of peanut butter, but wouldn't the fraternity have emptied his bank account? If they have the power to give him $3 million overnight, they certainly have the power to take it away, right? Haha, <laughs> it's like a mini Batman Returns, only the penguins are rats now. Also, but 
the trucks where the peanut butter is. Why would the rats leave the peanut buttery truck for a non-peanut buttery environment? Doesn't make sense. Damn, these rats infiltrated deep into the fraternity's inner sanctum in like 10 seconds. Here's your usual action scene piled with edits galore. But my real question is, how are there still this many henchmen alive after a thousand of those bombs went off? Guy who is good at knives, Mrs. Wesley here, and then becomes a horror movie dick for the rest of the scene until he dies. Also, did he just stay in his butcher shop while all the bombs went off? Or just like a video game where you fight the boss on his home turf? No! Sloan. Instead of helping out the butcher or anyone else during Wesley's homicidal rampage, all the important assassins hid like bitches up in the library. Why is nobody killing Wesley right now? Sure, he's about to give them proof that Sloan is a bad guy, but they don't know that yet. They've all got standing orders to kill Wesley right now. They <laughs> wanted you dead. My question is, why does the loom tell the head of the fraternity that it wanted Sloan dead? The loom was terribly stupid to trust Sloan with this information. Your name came up. And because we haven't given your character any definition, I wrote your nickname on the kill order. Your name came up. Your name came up. Your name. So, did the loom want all these people dead? Or did it just want to end the fraternity? Or did it want them dead because of the things they were going to do because Sloan told them to do it? The loom is mysterious and idiotic. Shoot this motherfucker and let us take our fraternity of assassins to heights reserved only for the gods of men. Damn it, Morgan Freeman, you are a national treasure. This magic bullet, which was definitely used to kill JFK, manages to go through several skulls in a circle without once slowing down. And I guess it's lucky everyone was in a perfect circle for this to happen. This is just the motherfucking decoy. Yeah, but how did you know that Sloan would show up here? Why would he expect you to go back to your former place of work? Can you fill in one gap, please? What the f have you done lately? Is this movie taunting me because I haven't killed people like Wesley has? The message of this movie is either be bored at your job and let your best friend f your girlfriend or be an assassin. How many sins is that? Hmm, doesn't seem like enough of this movie. Hey, remember that one about nine inch nails that I couldn't decide about earlier? Yeah, I made up my mind. And I was told that Just I Just pass. Hello? Hello, Neo. Do you know who this is? Papa, can you hear me? And the others you see around you are all very good at killing. So if I were you, I'd keep the gun pointed at me. Come on, point the gun at me! Point the gun at me! There you go. It's great, bro. Who's the man? I got news for you, baby. You're looking at the man. Bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Bullet, bullet, gun. Zap, zap, zap. You're my son. <laughs> That's impossible.